Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cats, we're going to talk New York Comic Con and some of the Twitter victims of such. We take a visit and stroll down to the Scarehouse and find out some stuff going on there. A little bit about portable, wearable computing and so much more. Awesome Cats. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky. It's time to get techy. It's time to get awesome. It is the awesome cast uh, right out of. Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg. Sorgatron on the Twitters and such. Uh, ready, ready to get into it. And, and I have, I, I can get to the Comic Con this weekend. I had work. I couldn't get out for it and everything. But to make up for it, I got two people who did attend uh, with me with that Batman pose. But now, if you're on video, look at that. Look at that Batman shot, action shot right there. We got John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing? Not too bad. Tired from Comic Con. Tired from getting geeked out all weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm moving stuff. But and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, of course, you know, we started this show with the explicit of getting opinions of people from the flyover states. So what do we do? We get somebody on the show that's from one of the states you're flying to. It's Mad Mike from the Bronx, agent of Shield. Yes, indeed. And I have the newest tech from Capsule Corp, sir. And I believe it will rival your Google Glass. Yes, he's a. Dude, the jealousy over the Google Glass. You see this here, right? You see this. Hey, Sorg, I don't know what you're talking about. My power level is over 9,000. And mine's only XE10 right now. So, uh, with that, but like I said, it's the awesome cast. We're over, of course, over at sorgatronmedia.com is where we make our home. But you can find us at awesomecast on Twitter. You can find us, uh, awesomecast on Facebook, on Google. Tell us uh, what you think about some of these stories. Um, um, and stories you think we should be talking about on the show. Tell us what your awesome thing of the week is, and maybe we'll talk about it here on the show as well, and at least, you know, share it with everybody. Um, hey, shout out. Hey, you know, I, I don't do this too often, but I want to give a shout out to the guy that keeps our Twitter running and keeps our description going, uh, our descriptions together, so we can uh, get this out without me trying to type the thing up at 2 in the morning. Uh, Mike Allen out there, uh, he's he's been doing an awesome job over the last couple months uh, with this, uh, putting the tweets out, so so more people come in and check us out here at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Live every Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time or so, looking at the clock right now. Um, so, hey, let's get right into it. New York Comic Con. You guys, uh, there's a lot of fun, but there's a lot of controversy going on right now on how Twitter is used. Uh, talking with a few people over the weekend, of course, that didn't go. Uh, but I, I, I'm very fortunate. I got two guys that went and one. And it says on your title there, you're a, you're a New York Comic Con Twitter victim there, Mike. I am. Um, I apparently didn't even know about this. Like, I had heard that some people's badges were hijacked. Um, and not, I mean, not hijacked based on, you know, how, how I read the article. But it tweeted without me knowing that it tweeted, even though I've prior given for it, which yeah. I don't really remember if I did or not. So were there rumors of this as, as you were going through the weekend? Um, not really, because from what, I, from what I've been able to gather, it was only for the people who went Thursday. Okay. Because that was the first day of it, and then the, they got an immediate backlash, like Thursday night when people saw, like, hey, I didn't tweet this. Why... Why would like my Twitter account be posting this stuff and, when I didn't tweet it? And to see, and then you and actually then, you, you actually sent us a picture here of what you got tweeted, and this is what everybody's kind of uh, big stink about. So basically, uh, you guys had a sign up process, and uh, at some point, apparently, you guys gave uh, Twitter permission to do this, uh, or else they wouldn't have been able to. Uh, but here's your Twitter account. For those on audio, uh, a couple of tweets that you confirm you did not tweet here. Uh, one is checking on the checking in to the best four days of my year, hashtag NYCC, and there's a link there, a bit.ly link. And the second was so much pop, pop culture to digest, can't handle the awesome, and then hashtag NYCC and a bit.ly link. So yeah, Yes, and I knew those weren't my tweets because, A, there was no cursing in them. 
Um, <laughs> two, it didn't talk about boobs, bacon, or justice, two th- three things I wholeheartedly stand for. Mm-hmm. And I usually don't put bit.ly links. So yeah, I, I don't even think yeah. to use bit.ly. Like no. I just let no. I just let Twitter auto. I don't even know. I don't even remember. Yeah, what I'm either uses, using. T- but, yeah, you know, mine are like either you know whatever Twitter uses or or whatever or TweetDeck or or, or Hootsuite. I don't even think about that. But yeah, it, it, they're obviously using a pretty big service now, with this. Now, see, I do remember um, during when you have to register your badge, mm-hmm. it comes in. It comes right up, and you have to authorize with Twitter for uh, auth sign in. I do remember agreeing to allow tweets from mm-hmm. my account. Mm-hmm. Now, I only had a, a Friday um, badge, so I could only go Friday. Unfortunately, they were sold out pretty much all the other days. Um, and I was in line Friday morning waiting to go in, and I saw, uh, I think it was Mashable, started tweeting about people being hijacked or whatever they were saying it was. And I, I actually went because I had already tapped in and I did not get any tweets sent from my account, which made me kind of sad. I was actually... <laughs> I did not get victimized, so... <laughs> but I don't feel like I was being victimized, because I, I remember agreeing to it. Okay. I do remember signing in, because when you get your badge in the mail, it has a sticker on it. You do have to register it. When you go out and register it, there was a multitude of ways to authorize or to register your badge. One of them was through authorization via Twitter. I remember going in there, authorizing it. Now, I did not... The other thing that surprised me now, they're using the RFID badges. Um, I tapped in Friday morning, and I never left. But I expected walking around the con to be tapping at more places. Like, I expected them really to be tracking me. And And I... Based on the way you tap in and tap out, I mean... They had a problem tapping me in. Like, she had to really mash my card against the scanner going in. Yeah. And the person that tapped me out. I had, like, she she was really, like, swiping the card against her. I think it looked like um, an Android, like, Nexus 7, like what you have. Okay. So it you looked, mean one of these? One of those. Like something like it this? Looked exactly like Hopefully that. Hopefully with not as many yeah. fingerprints. It definitely there. wasn't one of these. Oh, it wasn't one of those. Definitely what do you got there? A, a mini iPad. Definitely oh. wasn't a mini iPad. It definitely wasn't a mini iPad. <laughs> but no, I, no, it was doing RFID. I don't think it was doing NFC. Now, it did look like they had some kind of weird either case on it or something on the back of the device. Yeah, because I don't think they, this doesn't have like NFC and stuff in it, does that it? That has NFC. It, it does have NFC? And that has the Qui, that is the Qui mobile charging where it has the induction charging. Qui, on this thing? Qui, yeah. Qi. How do I take advantage of that? <laughs> Go get a Qi charger. I got, and it will just work I don't, without yeah. like the attachment like we've always had in the past. Right. I didn't even know that. I'm pretty sure. I'm 90, I'm 97% sure. That you can you can induction charge. I'm ninety seven percent sure. I'm gonna look into that. You know what? You know what? Easy way to test it, and Krause mm-hmm. will like this one. Um, walk into a, a a Verizon store and go over to the Windows Phone section and pull the Nokia off the thing because they have theirs induction charged and put that on it mm-hmm. and see if it just starts charging. Mm-hmm. What are you doing, sir? Just testing the wares. I'm a customer. <laughs> I got it. you. Charge me enough. I can come in and try to test your thingy, right? You know, <laughs> we're gonna um, test their thingy, <laughs> testing thingies. But uh, sure okay, <laughs> so that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, somebody get that down there, Mike. Uh, <laughs> we have too many mics involved with the show now, too. Um, so okay, so you you had this RFID tag. So basically, it all just checked in. Like you guys didn't see anywhere else where like was there a promise of did they did they talk about the idea that there's a tag in this thing? They, they talked about the tag in the thing because when you, you registered, it talked all about the fact that it was an RFID. And this is supposed to be um, to keep from, like, piracy? Of, I think it's to keep from piracy. And the, one, the other thing that it did is it kept... It was really interesting. I'm, I'm guessing it kept from, A, piracy, people being able to get into the con even though it wasn't them. Yeah. Um, so you can't just, like, hand organize the lines a lot better. What's that? It, orga- it organized the lines to get in a lot better. Yes. Really? Yeah. I've been going to New York Comic Con since it started. This was the easiest version of getting into New York Comic Con I've ever been to. What was the difference? 
they actually funneled it into lines as opposed to a mass of people just rushing into the con. Okay. Like, it was very, very well organized. Just because, like, you have to funnel through and you have to badge in. So it's like, you can have a huge mass of people, which there was, but it ultimately boiled down into eight or nine lines. So it's only, like, eight or nine people going in at once as opposed to a huge mass of everyone... Because the way that it used to work, I mean, you've been there, Stork. Yeah. They had you just you just have your badge on, you show up whenever you want, and you just walk in. It was way different this time, and it was definitely a lot easier to control the mob. The other thing that was interesting is you had to tap out. So what, one of the things that they kept people from like sharing a badge or sharing a ticket, like you could take your badge and pass it through the fence in the old days, yeah. or I could have taken the badge and thrown it over the fence. And I'm pretty else, sure you can still share a badge. You just can't, like... Be in there simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't double up. Yeah. So yeah. there's still nothing... Is there any distinction of this is a non-transferable ticket or anything like that, They do really? say it. They say that your your credentials, your personal information, your name, your birthday, whatever you have to... I can't remember everything that I gave to get in, but is tied to that badge. And mm-hmm. if they find for any reason... The person with that badge is not you. You're both. Ejected. Yeah, but I mean, how many opportunities are there? Yeah. Are, are you, unless you're in there really causing mischief. You but, know? but I expected them to use it for more like an advertising thing. Like, I almost expected when I purchased something for them to really ask to tap. Mm-hmm. Because then they could actually track where I was at what time, what people are yeah, interested yeah. in. If nothing else, they do have... Um, now they have a, a bit of analytics of when you did, like, who who exactly and how many people checked in and out at certain times, mm-hmm. which I'm sure is going to help them with figuring out flow in the future or, or any other kind of analytics for them to study for just what happens through the day. Mm-hmm. Now, now, if I recall, you check in at the one spot. Does that mean it's a little less wide open when you go down to the halls? So I came, I went in early, Mike. I don't know what time you went in, but I went in probably half an hour before the con was set to start. So I t- tapped in at the front area, and then they actually direct you inside and downstairs, and you're put into these kind of holding pens <laughs> where it's in the order that you came in. The interesting thing that I wish I would have known was, so 10 o'clock hit, and they started slowly letting each area in, and I would guess it's probably 600 people in per line segment. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I, I realize now is because the con opens at 10, that's when they started letting those lines of people in. If you would have walked in the front doors at 10, you could have walked right up. You didn't get funneled that's down. That's what I did. Oh, downstairs and back <laughs> that's what, up. That's what I did every day. I got there. I got to the con every day at like 10, 15, 10, 30. I just bypassed the whole line. Yeah. So I wish, like, yeah, I wish I would have known that or even thought about that. Because, I mean, they, they tried to really push you inside the, the convention center once you tapped in. But I could you could have gone over to a food truck, grabbed some food, hung out for 10 minutes. Here's some, just to get an idea how many yeah. people there are, I, I found Mike's Instagram photos. If you, if, you, if you run by my Twitter real quick, I think yeah. from, I think, two tweets back. Okay. Or three tweets back. There's a picture, and that's me waiting in the secondary line to come up into the con. Okay. Which... I was four rows over, so I'm guessing 2,400 people deep in line. And there was probably, by that time, there was another three additional rows. I found a couple of vines. There's the vine of R2-D2. Um, <laughs> but it was, oh, the, the one vine is of, of the, the crowd there cheering. Yeah, that's, so this is, this is that's me waiting in line. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks familiar. <laughs> and that's actually, actually I think I see myself. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But uh, but back to the, what we were talking about originally there. So so and and you know Chachi's in the chat room saying this is what he said when I start I brought up the story with him this weekend uh was well you guys shouldn't have uh, agreed to the tweets, right? If it, if it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Now Mike, you don't seem too angry about it, but you had heard about it. Well, uh I I thought like I thought when I was agreeing to a tweet it would just agree to tweet out once that, hey, I registered my badge for New York Comic Con. Because you're used to that. 
Yeah, exactly. I've done I've done stuff like that before, but independently, like, and not even something scheduled. Like, because I have another scheduled tweet on my account for the Kids for Heroes Foundation. Yeah, and that, you know that, that you that sign up. Chachi does too, yeah, and that yeah. that that generally goes out every day. Yeah, like once a day, usually around the same time, which is fine. But for it to just randomly happen like that, like it's a little no, it's off. I mean, I don't really care because it wasn't really anything, you know. Vile. I mean, they were just trying to push the car, obviously. But it was just a little, you know, a little forewarning would have been nice. It is a little. It is a. It's a little weird because it is like your voice and it's an understanding. And now, now you agree to it, and you understand you do agree that they could do that. Right. Well, I understand that now. Yeah, but. exactly. But I think that's I think that's the general thing is most people don't understand what they're given permission to do. Uh, I think it's it, 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 actually I'll pull up on my Twitter. Well, you, every time you sign up for something like that and you give them permission to do that tweet, a lot of times that that's still active. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a service that you signed up for like you know six a months ago, ago. How many how many services do we connect to that we're testing and we're checking out because we're always trying to check out new you know new services and stuff. Any we're of those, always accepting thingies. What you're accepting? We're thingies. always we're always, we're always accepting thingies. accepting thingies. Yes, um, we're testing thingies. And here I'll, I'll I'll try to pull up mine to kind of show you uh, how it's it's good it's good every so often go in there and clean that up. If there's something you don't recognize, don't use anymore, kill that because I mean some of these companies, like Plark. huh? Like Plark. Like Plark. In MySpace. In MySpace. <laughs> Why? Um, but they could seriously, like, one of these companies that f- went under could have sold their activation list, maybe. I, I'm pretty sure you could do something like I this. I don't know, because I bet you, you that's that? a token. Is that, is it, I bet you it's a token. It, okay. are just be able to willy But they could say, you know, uh, pay us money and we'll tweet, make all these people tweet this thing mm-hmm. about your product. I could, I could see that happen. You know, that, I mean, uh, you don't know what you're signing up for, especially with something like that. Every time you go and say, uh, Mike, I know you have a service on Thursday nights, I've noticed, uh, that lets me know how many times you tweeted and gotten retweeted during the week. Yes. So that's something that you could have going, forget about, six months later, and now they still have access to tweet really whatever they want. Now, see, this is where this is where I actually think they're, they're, it's in their best interest to do this mm-hmm. because, let's face it, them doing advertising during the con is a little bit ridiculous because they're sold out. It's 365 days till the next con. Till, but they and, still want to be months? the buzz. They still want to be, hey, look, your buddy went. You know? Yeah, I, I see that, but now now you bring up a really good point. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing the minute the tickets go on sale for next year, everybody's Twitter accounts are going to reactivate, and there is going to be a swarm of tweets all about. Would they? Would they after the backlash that they just got? And now, yes, they can do this. You did give them permission yeah. to do this, but this is where I think there's a little bit of a social contract here. You you. Agree to what you think is a reasonable amount of tweets from these people. So, so here's a question, Mike. If yes. They, if, if when tickets go on sale and they tweet from your account next year, are you not going to buy a pass? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> I'm buy a pass. I just revoked the access right, like, as we were speaking. Exactly. And for those curious about, like, okay, where do I revoke this? Like, you know, some people don't know. Some people honestly... <laughs> don't know this page exists i have up here for the video if you go into your i went into the settings and under apps here and you see i have twitter for android uh mixbit which is an app that i have beam for full screen which is a google glass thing but if i go down through here one is a big long page if i go down to the bottom i'm sure we follow when the heck have i used we follow last google myspace MySpace. MySpace. there it is i'm pretty (laughs) sure futurama head in a jar i didn't even know i put that see there you go what else we got favestar.fm i forgot i was on that tweet deck directory and that's like the old version of tweet deck that looks like because you got a new tweet deck discuss a new tweet (laughs) duck is connected venmo Really? I, I don't even know what that is. What is Hunch? You know? Um, it'd be interesting <laughs> to see if any of these are still around. Love apps. Dig? Is, any, is Dig still around? Dig's still around. Dig, Dig's still I'm doing stuff, sure. right? Why Frog? And some of these, like, uh, Siri. Oh, look. Siri, San Jose, virtual personal assistant. Hmm. That's the old <laughs> That's Siri the old before Siri they got before bought. Apple bought. <laughs> before they got bought. Personal hype quotient. I, I, a beer buy, um, LinkedIn. I, I, you see, like I got some weird stuff in here. I should probably go through Do you this. Get bright kite in there. Um, 
we back you for Hold on, Bright. I know, but I, I, I don't know if you saw the tweet. It is over the weekend, so you're probably busy with the traveling. But I was going through my blog, and I, I wanted to find a new design. It's feeling kind of clunky. And I was going through my plugins. I had a MySpace cross poster that never I worked, I did see your way. tweet about I that. I saw a Bright Kite plug in and they were still active and i'm like okay let's get rid of this stuff right here because i mean that's the longest blog that i've been running so it's kind of kind of masked up some stuff in there so but i got a nice responsive web design cool works pretty good where'd you get the theme from uh the internet the internet the internet <laughs> i don't know i just like i can't remember what's called or anything i just i don't know i just searched and just responsive wordpress themes and i didn't realize how many are out there um, so I, I just wanted to kind of get updated. I, I'm looking, I'm hoping to redo like all the rest of the sites too, to get a little, because everything just feels kind of boxy and clunky. If you want to see that's, that's, uh, my new theme right there. Oh, very so nice. yeah, I like how it's using the pictures, kind of like how Google plus Sorgatron.com. If you guys want to check this on the audio, um, and got everything a little kind of better organized and stuff. It's kind of slow. It feels kind of, and this is the older laptop, but it feels like I got five articles loading. It feels like it kind of slows down a little mm-hmm. bit. Anyways, back to it. Um, so, I mean, this is something like I, I think is, you know, people don't realize that they're connecting to something like this. Um, and, and you know, obviously, but but it's, it's a trust issue, really. I know you're saying like I didn't get tweeted. I wanted to. Yeah, I know. I'm bummed <laughs> out. I feel like I feel like I I, I want to be violated. Like you, yeah. <laughs> and that's why you went to New York City, though. It's um, okay. New York City will violate you in more than one way. Exactly. <laughs> but it was on, on a side note. It was interesting because oddly enough, uh, so I went on Friday and I was sitting in Starbucks Friday evening waiting for Mega Bus, and um. There was no room in Starbucks, so I found a small seat in the corner where I was. I, I had to ask, "Can you move your chair a little bit so I can get back there?" And the people next to me were from the con, yeah. And they were talking about, you know, I wish there were more places to charge my devices. And I actually interjected in their conversation. I said, "You know what? This year was. I heard one of the first years, and, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't think I was there the last two. When was it the last time you were there, Sorg?" Two, uh, two, 11, I think. 11. So that's the last time I was there. Yeah. Um, so going in there, I said, you know, there's there's like eight, there was like six or eight tables you could just walk up to. You could charge your devices. They had some charging stuff. And then I pulled out, I have, I, I'm big on portable chargers. So I pulled out this little device here, mm-hmm. which if you see has a US, uh, big USB and a micro USB. Um, port. So it looks can, like, in frozen on audio, it, it looks like the size of like an iPhone. It, it is actually, it is the size of an iPhone 5s. Uh, so, so this this device um, will let you charge. It has uh, four thousand milliamps of of charging power. Um, so I was able. I have two of these, but you can recharge it using the the, the micro USB. It has a little test button. It lights up. Um, I've had really good luck with these. I charged my phone once and my digital camera twice, and I still had over, I had almost a full bat, one of the full batteries left. Um, So I was talking to them about this as this girl came in, and she was also at the con, and she's like, is there a a plug next to you that I can use because my phone's dead and my friends can't find me and I have no battery power? I'm like, if you promise not to run out the door with this, you can use it. So she ended up sitting down. We were all talking about different stuff. And lo and behold, the two guys that were there that I was originally talking to were from Dormont and Mount Lebanon. Wow. <laughs> Which was really <laughs> weird. How I mean, out of how many thousands of people that attended the con, and then were later at Starbucks down the block, who wouldn't know? So I made some friends there. That was cool. Um, some of the other devices I use, but um, I have an iPhone charger the Mophie juice pack. Is that the one I got here? That's probably the one you got there. But it, um, this one's the pink one, though. You didn't get the you, pink one? Yeah, I didn't get the pink one. I have so, like And that, I had one the of these. I actually had one of those for the 3GS. Uh, the 3GS, yeah. And you used it at the con. I used it at the con, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I bought it. Like I, I think I bought it because it was a little cheaper because it was right before the 4Ss were coming out. Mm-hmm. It was at that big window, and I was like, God, I gotta wait, you know? Uh, so I picked it up. Because I'm like, I gotta get through this con. Let's do it. It's a little cheaper than the the four version was, and it worked really well. The the thing I like about the the revive or any of the, I mean, Mophie makes one of these. There's a bunch mm-hmm. of companies that make them. It's generic USB. Yeah. So you could plug your yeah. Nexus Seven into it. You could plug a, yeah. a, any anything that charges off a of USB. You're good to go. Kind of nice. The other thing that I always carry with me is if you if you're a Mac user, I don't know that they I don't those. make these I for the those. PC, but. If you're familiar with the Mac, it has the, the little power brick type yep. thing. 
and you usually take just the plug and plug it in here or the long cord. Um, this device actually plugs into the Mac charger. You flip that down, you can plug it in the wall, but it has a USB port on it as well. So nice. if you can get to a wall, now if you're crazy like I am, you take this, you take these, you plug these into your laptop to charge these, and then you have an extra USB port to charge while you're charging your laptop, and you're just sucking the life out of whatever convention center or wherever you're at. Or the Megabus battery. Or the Megabus battery. <laughs> And, and it worked. It worked out really well for me. So um, that time when like it kept shorting out on the way back from New York when I got glass, it was probably somebody like you, <laughs> probably that that had everything. Yeah. Although I was trying to plug in like three things at a time too, so I can't really speak to that because I'm like trying to pull up my laptop and plug the glass in and my phone and I don't know what else did I have, Mike. I, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. the other the other thing that I found I found completely convenient, and and I mean I carry a big backpack and and you know how cables are. Cables can go everywhere. If you bring up that last link, um, cool. and I found this to be completely useful as well. It's made by Cocoon. It's called a Grid It. I've heard of this. And, and you've Have seen we talked about that well. here before? I, you know what? You said you need to show this, and then I never pulled it out of my bag. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. This, uh, I've heard Andy Nako talk about this on, on, on Mac Break a ton of times. Um, if you're not on video, it's just, what do you say? It's a grid of just rubber bands. Ru- yeah, pretty much rubber <laughs> bands. And you just stick whatever device or cords or cameras and you stick a mouse in there and it just slides right into your back. Yeah, it's kind of like cross hatched. Yeah. So, and, and all the different and cross shaking, hatches are different, si- different sizes. So like uh, underneath something, there may be three more that you're not going to end up using, but the next time you may put a cable in there, they come in a bunch of different sizes. Um, and I, I find them completely handy. I actually have two of them, one for each one of my travel bags. And it just makes, between the charging and the grid it, I mean, you're trying to pull out SD cards. I have them in, like, a little wallet. Yeah. You're trying to pull out different stuff real quick and, and be... See, my, my secret has always been, and I'm exceeding this, especially days when I go to, like, a wrestling show or some other shoot or something. Like, you know, I'm always wearing cargo pants these days mm-hmm. because I have, <laughs> especially especially if uh, I'm, going, I'm walking around with glass, so I got a jet pack in one pocket, got my iPhone, got whatever else here, and then, and then a lot of times the, all the cords are in one pocket, yeah. you know? It's like... God, it's the same it, thing. It, 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 it's it's like I kind of have to, you know, just to just to kind of get around. So, so uh, Mike, what was your favorite part of the con? Oh, or your favorite that, trinket you got? I don't know that. Well, my favorite thing that I got is this um, authentic shield badge. And I'm sad. I, I actually passed that by, thinking, "Oh, I'll come back later." And then I was like, "Damn it! I and, forgot to grab that." And it's like really good quality. They. Um, they take your picture right there. They put on a little faux suit that just Velcro to the back. So you're actually like wearing a suit in the picture of your uh, shield badge. And they give you the Phil Coulson one, too. Oh, really? Nice. They, oh, that damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we did only go one day, though. Yeah, I know. You can't get and everything. That's the problem. There. And, and I'm, I'm, as I'm going to more cons, I was at Philly Comic Con, which was a Wizard Con, I was at New York City Comic Con. You got Steel City Con, Pittsburgh Comic Con. Like one day, if you want, uh, one day isn't enough. There, there's no way. If you, uh, want, it's enough for Steel um, City Con. It's for Steel it's, City Con. <laughs> it's definitely enough for Steel City. Con. Enough for New York Con, the big cons. It's not enough. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, unless you're going there specifically for one thing. Mm-hmm. Like if you're going, like one of my friends went to Con just on Sunday. Because she wanted to meet John Barrowman. Which his line was ridiculous. You guys ever see Comic Con yes. the movie? The Morgan Spurlock yeah. one? It's really good. And it was, I want to say it was on Netflix or it was on Hulu last I knew. I don't know if it's still on. I, I could see. Um, I think it's on Netflix. Is it on Netflix I now? Think I think it is. I mean, yeah. If not, it's on iTunes. Like I think I ran it on iTunes initially, and it's really good. It's got Kevin Smith and all those guys, and it follows a couple people because like, you guys are you you're talking about like you know people go for a certain reason mm-hmm. and everything, and it follows a few people that go for a certain reason. It follows the cosplayers for a bit. I, it follows somebody that's looking for a specific figure or something. And so as it's uh, actually uh, they talked to the guys from I think it was Mile High Comics mm-hmm. that you always see in the comic books with the price list like since like the 80s probably longer oh, yeah um, yeah that's like one of the more famous ones out they, they now, followed now them because they were um talking about well do we we go to this con and are we going to make our money and we need this to keep going 
Mm -hmm. Apparently, they're not doing too well um, at at the moment, at least. Um, So it it was a really good representation. Again, it's San Diego, but there's a little, you know, obviously that's way bigger than New York is right now. Oh, but New York, I've I've been to San Diego. It's at least three times the size of New York. Oh, my God. And I went like, in 2011, and how unmanageable that was. <laughs> like, if you go to San Diego, Con, unless you live there, you have to go for the whole time. Yeah. You yeah. have to, just because it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. I mean, it's so, it's a lot of fun. But especially if you want to go to like, one of the big panels or something like that, that's basically your whole day. Is waiting in line. Yeah, and that's like, the thing. I, I went to I went to the Shield panel on Saturday. Yeah, because I want to see the Agents Shield panel because I had never like waited for one of those huge panels before. So I'm like, all right, you know what? Thursday and Friday, I got done most of the things I wanted to do. I'm like, I'll wait online. I'll see, you know, what it's like. And although I had to sit through some god awful panels, <laughs> it was <laughs> worth it. But by the time I got out of the Shield panel. It was six fifteen. The con was going to close in an hour. Now is it? Basically, my whole day. Yeah, like like I I waited in line for Kristen Bauer, who's Pam on True. Oh Blood. yeah, I waited in. Were her. you Were you in the True Blood panel? No, I wasn't in the True Blood panel. What What yeah. happened was I I went down to get her autograph. They said, you know, she's going to be leaving soon for the True Blood panel. I'm like, okay, well that's she, they're like she's going to be gone for an hour and a half, two hours. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to sit here in line. With no, with her not being there, I was pro- it was probably only twenty deep at that point in time because she actually showed up early to sign. Um, mm-hmm. So came back later, and I'm like, okay, cool. It's probably only forty deep now. Not bad. Let's say a minute a person. That's forty minutes, right? Well, halfway into the line, they're like, uh, she has to go do a photo op. There's uh, a half an hour. I'm like, okay, well, it's only a half an hour. I might as well wait. So like two and a half hours later, I'm, I'm getting a I'm getting an autograph. And and I had a, actually a really bad autograph experience with her, but that's that's a story for a different time. I don't want to diss the con people, <laughs> but still, she did seem rather surly. Well, I'll give her credit. <laughs> it was, and, and you know, I will go into it because I, I mean, I, I've had great experiences with with anyone I've met. Um, and you never know what they've been through through right. the day and doing dealing with all that stuff. Maybe they had an asshole fan. But she no, but she she was really nice. She was spending a little more time than your average person with mm-hmm. with each person. Mm-hmm. Well, by dumb, complete, stupid luck, somebody she knew was leaving the con for the day and walked up to the side and started talking to her during my like two minutes. So I'm like. I got no interaction, no personal anything. Like, she's talking to this guy, pauses for three seconds. We get our picture taken together. She signs the picture while she's talking to the, the, these people. And I'm like, eh, this. You know, for me, and it's great. Like, you know, I'll go in and say, oh, there's Mark Hamill. And I'll see him from about 50 feet mm-hmm. away. I'm like, well, I saw Mark Hamill. That's good enough for me. And I love to beat him and stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but the, the the greatest stuff for me going to the, the New York Comic Con was always the chance stuff, right? You know, like well, I Dan Dan Fogler, he's um, yeah, he was in Fanboys, right? Yeah, he was in Fanboys, oh. and he's on a new TV show, Man Up. He was by luck sitting at some table. I w- walked up to him, talked to him for five minutes, ran into Greg Grunberg upstairs mm-hmm. late in the afternoon. He wasn't even supposed to be up there. Talk to him for a good ten minutes. We just chit chatted. Awesome. That's, that's what's that's, really cool. That's the cool part. Um, I was just walking around. I don't like you. Probably noticed. I just kind of wander when I get there. Um, <laughs> the same thing. I, I usually just break off from the group and wander. And that's when like I found myself like, oh, cool, the Ninja Turtles booth. And it's like, oh, there's a line for the Ninja Turtles booth. Like, Who's up there? Kevin Eastman. I'm like, what? <laughs> And I just and I'm like you know again like maybe twenty people deep and I'm like I just like stumbled onto an opportunity to get an autograph with Kevin Eastman right uh, the the dot com video we did the last time I was there dot mm-hmm. com from Thirty Rock you're just in a booth and it was like towards the end of the day I'm like hey you're such and such you want to do a video with me real quick <laughs> you know because we we're there with the press pass and everything so yeah again just like kind of cool little chance things like that like that was cooler than anything that was press we had lined mm-hmm. up for the weekend even you know was, was that kind of thing so yeah. yeah i know one of my friends was walking through the con and he accidentally got bumped into an old man and he went to turn around to apologize and it was stan lee <laughs> 
<laughs> so he screamed, that- holy expletive, it's Stan Lee. And then security immediately came in and was like, trying to help Stan to the ground. <laughs> you know, I saw, I saw Whoopi Goldberg on, on the con floor, and I... I don't know what occurred. I know I I then saw on Monday that she was on the View and she was showing pictures and how she was there and she's promoting mm-hmm. some stuff. She didn't. I, she wasn't listed to be there, or whatever. But she's just chilling out. And I don't know what occurred. I don't know if she fell down or if if she got bumped or whatever. But she had security detail swarmed around her. They're patting her face down. I don't know if they were prepping like makeup for her for a video. Or or what? But like Wait, her just you, being on the con floor, like there was just this mass amount of people everywhere, including like security type people and people trying to get in front of her. So it, how is it that we see two different stars of Sister Act at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> I saw um, Kathy and the Jimmy from Sister Con and um, Focus Focus. Ah. That's random. That is totally random. I wonder if they saw each other. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, I you know, we we spent a lot of time with Comic Con, but it, it's it's a hey, it's it's nerd Christmas for us, especially on the East Coast here. I love to con wise. I'd love to attend um, really PAX in the near future. Uh, I'd like to I do C two E two. C two E two. That's over in Chicago. That <laughs> that's, that'd probably be, wouldn't be a bad one. Um, and that one's getting pretty big too, right? From that hearing? one's getting that one's getting big. Yeah, like like New York Comic Con big yet? Uh, probably about the same size. About the same size. That'd, that'd be worth it because I, I see a lot of media stuff coming out of there. Like mm-hmm. we're starting to see last few years with New York Comic Con. The, so. the, the one thing I was impressed with with Wizard Con was it wasn't the tables were spread out more. There was there was a lot of stuff there, and there were a lot of stars, and there was a lot going on. But they seemed to do a better job of judging this. Or maybe it's just because they had more space to deal with. Mm-hmm. I feel like that that con it was easier to move around. So I, I think I'm going to try to re. I'm going to uh, do that again next year, but I'm probably not going to do Philly. I might do Chicago. Mm-hmm. So yeah, don't do Wizard World New York. I see. I feel that would be odd because a month later is going to be New York Comic Con. So I, why go back um, for? Yeah, I went to Wizard World. I'm there. Granted, I went on the last day, but. It is so far out of the way. It's very awkwardly set up because it's at like a, a pier. Mm-hmm. So it's all sorts of different buildings and everything. It's not contained. Uh, Philly um, was at least one, one big center. convention center. All right. Well, I uh, want to get to, uh, like I said, I, I went to uh, uh, over the weekend. I uh, had a chance to go out to Scare House. Actually, my second time out there this year. Um, locally here in Aetna, PA, uh, a really cool haunted house. They got a lot of stuff going on out there. Uh, so we got to go talk about some of the stuff they're doing behind the scenes in the new basement. Here's a video we put together. Take a look. Hey guys, for the awesome cast, it's Sorg here with Margie Kerr, and tell us what you're doing here with the Scare House. Uh, I analyze data and figure out what scares people, and how to scare them. All right, all right. Well, okay. So you're going to make me more more scared going through this. Now, I've been a long time you know, coming to Scare House for a few years now. We've actually had Scott uh, here uh, uh, on the show before talking about how they get people in the door all year round and social media and everything. Uh, and and, and you're, you're analyzing like what happens when they come out the other side, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's so. my favorite thing to do. I, I like to stand by the door and try to talk to everybody who comes out and ask them. <laughs> if they can talk to them. Okay. Yeah. And ask them how their experience was. It's it's so interesting. Excellent, excellent. Now now you, uh, we did uh, look a little bit through the basement. Yes. Some scary. So like we we weren't even there with the actors, and I was still a little. You know, it, it reminds me of my basement a little. But yeah, we have uh, every room under surveillance, and all of the actors are trained actors. They've gone through extensive background checks. We go through explicit rules and boundaries about what they can and cannot say um, about the content and. Uh, what we're going for, you know, when we started developing the basement, we 
um, determined what the goal was. And the goal was to you know, give people an opportunity to step outside their comfort zone and in doing so learn more about themselves. So it's not going for that traditional um, startle scare. It's, it's digging a little bit deeper and trying to, to get to that next level of what's really going on here. So yeah, that's the, the basement is a, a whole different kind of animal than the main haunts. You know, Creepos, Christmas in 3D, Pittsburgh Zombies, and Forsaken are PG-13, you know, kind of uh, um, meant to activate that fight or flight and the startle response and, and get you going. Uh, the basement is more about, you know, pushing your boundaries, getting in your head a little more, being more interactive. I, I know, so we, we talked about this. Yeah. It's very sparse. Yes. It's not about what's around you. Because I know, I know, going through the main haunt, uh, I want to stop and look at everything. Right. Like I'm a detail guy, right? I, I want, I want to read the signs of the zombie apocalypse, right? Because there, there's some great stuff there's in there. There's some interesting if things when you dig deep in there. Yeah. If, if you don't, have, if you don't have your wife or girlfriend dragging you through the thing, just take a second, look around, yeah, and, and I think you'll be really surprised. I feel like it, there's enough stuff. I feel like I find something new every time. I, I still do, and I, I go through here, you know, almost every day sometimes, and uh, I'll find things written on the wall. Mm -hmm. I love our actors. They they write stuff. And they're in there acting. They're just they're writing things on the walls, and I'll go through and just see what they're writing, and it's it's. It sounds like the monsters are getting ready. Yes, they, they are. <laughs> are cool? we, uh, I, I think you know it's kind of old, but it's kind of cool how you guys are kind of have a bit of technology going as we look a little bit about. I don't know if people know when they go through a house like this, there are cameras everywhere. We look up, I always see the little the little lights up there because uh, I know what to look for. But you guys have an eye on everybody. You know what's going on. You're never in danger with this. No, uh, this is just this is our security setup. So we have we use Landmark security staff. They do the uh, security for the pirates and the stealers. They're uh, a plus team and. Uh, we have uh, two security staff that are down here at all times. One person monitoring, the other person uh, monitoring out in the in the haunt um, for people you know who, who call the safe word. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have you know our floor plans. Everyone is made aware of where all the emergency exits are, what the emergency protocol is, uh, and we. Um, are able to respond to situations within seconds uh, if there is a problem. So, uh, and there, there, there hasn't been. Uh, just we, we get a lot of people calling the safe word uh, that we then have to go and retrieve and walk out. But and it's just them kind of getting overwhelmed with it, right? Yeah, they get overwhelmed. They're just like, ah, I can't do it anymore. Uh, it's the, the uncertainty of the basement is what gets people. Mm -hmm. just, now, you know, when you're saying the safe word is just the actors pick it up and they start responding. The, yeah, the actors pick it up and then somebody they have they all have whistles, mm -hmm. so they they alert uh, the security who's you know in the background a lot of times in the haunt you know you're being watched constantly and people don't know uh, that there are there are eyes behind the walls and they're watching you and they're ready <laughs> and, and I know uh, and I've noticed going around the haunt that I've seen the cameras like yeah. going through so so that's pretty staked out yeah. there yeah so yeah we, so, we take it very seriously. so it's kind of hard to get kind of stuck in a corner and nobody finds you oh yeah no I, I would say it's impossible mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the only time that that has happened is after uh, everybody, we were closed for the night and uh, the manager was going through turning out the lights and an actor got stuck in the dark. <laughs> so I was just like, help, I can't see. So one of the people that already should know yes. where everything is. <laughs> and all our actors are supposed to carry flashlights, so. Um, so like I said, we, we had Scott on before, talking about social media, talking about videos. I know I subscribe to the YouTube channel. I oh, love great. seeing the videos that pop up all the time. I, and I, I'm just a fan of really cool video. Yeah. yeah because that's something I like to do. Um, and he talked about, like, like again, this happens all year. He talks about the ramp up, you know, like, like here from in February, but not getting, you know, sick of hearing about the scare house yeah. that early on. Like, can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, we try to just continually create interesting content. Not even so much just to, I mean, it's just because we want to. There's just so much cool stuff out there that links in with what we like in some way, even if it's not directly related to you know, the haunted attraction industry, if we just think it's really cool, we're like, hey, let's let's do something with it, let's talk about it, let's do a video about it. Um, just because it's really um, kind of, we, we just love doing it. We love producing material that people, you know, want to watch. So. All right, we're going to go take a look at a little bit behind the scenes and see a couple spots there already, and uh, we'll see how we come out on the other end. All right, single file line, please make sure that your cameras and cell phones stay in your pockets so keep your hands to yourself. So we 
just went through the scare house and I gotta say even from them being in here earlier this year they've changed so much and made it even more intense I think it made it even worse going through a second time this year um, the zombies are even crazier than they usually are and that is not a new attraction that's great the Delirious 3D is insane and makes me Boozy as all hell. Um, we got a great tour. Thanks a lot for Scare House having us come out and seeing a little, little peek at the basement and a little bit of tech that goes on uh, behind the scenes and everything. Um, go check it out, scarehouse.com, and you can find out when it's running, how to get tickets, and all that kind of stuff right here in Aetna, PA, right outside, just like minutes outside of, of Pittsburgh. Well, there you go. There's that Scare House video. Thank you very much for uh, Marky Kerr and the crew out there at Scare House for having us out and check out a little bit of behind the scenes. Uh, so so let's get into the news. We'll get a little bit of what's coming up here uh, in a little bit. But uh, what, you got a couple stories here, Chilla. One of the things I found interesting, and it, it kind of follows on the whole uh, being violated on Twitter. Twitter is going to allow users to opt in to accept DMs from people that don't follow them. I saw this. So, but, but we have to go turn it on. You have to go turn it on, which I think is pretty cool. And I actually think... It's an interesting concept. I wouldn't mind. I'll be honest with you. I mean, what, I'm not stupid enough to, to click on some ridiculous malware infested link. Mm -hmm. If I don't know you or I look at your ID and see that see who you are, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I don't know. Um, and I got it right. Actually, I, I found it right here. They, they're having trouble finding it on, on one of the shows I was watching. But right here under messages, receive direct messages from any follower. Generally, you must follow someone in order to do it. And th now, this would be a good thing to do if I'm... And they, they were talking about the idea of this with brands. Uh, so, like, for the podcast stuff... Because, uh, actually, this happened because we're trying to do contests to, you know, give out free tickets to, like, local wrestling shows on the Mayhem Show account. And then somebody <laughs> was like, like, hey, follow me so I can DM you my address and name and everything. And now, if I turn this on on all those, those types of accounts, I don't need to worry about that anymore. Right. Anybody can DM me. So maybe I don't want to do it on my personal one. But for Sorgatron Media, for Mayhem mm -hmm. Show, for Awesome Cast, I think it all gets turned on. Yeah, and, and like I, it's interesting because I actually went back and looked. I have some odd DMs that I've – obviously it's, it's, it's spam DMs. But like I actually got DM'd by um, – I don't even know how to pronounce her name. Janina Gavin Carr. She's from True Blood and a couple other – flicks like I've, I've had some good dms from people i would have never expected to dm me mm -hmm. but i look at it as i don't i don't care dm away i'll, okay. I'll either ignore you or it's I just won't. like another tweet yeah to to a point what i find it's more i see i think they need to do something where if someone dms you you're allowed to dm them back i because like if, like there needs to be a connection there right because i've gotten dms from people that that don't follow me so they but i follow them so they dm me and now i can't dm them because they don't follow me and then it's like okay now i have to do a public mention to say hey i can't dm you back till you follow me blah 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 so i i don't know i i think it's an interesting an interesting segment i i hope they continue to evolve the dm space because i will be honest with you i do leverage dm even as tech almost as text messages i mean you and i don't necessarily text message but we dm back and forth mm -hmm. there's people i know overseas i dm with because i'm not sending them and paying for an international text yeah so i i find it whereas dm dm needs to continue to evolve um, and it's really been kind of like the forgotten thing with mm -hmm. twitter um uh, they hide it like you like i think most people don't really it's where it is yeah for the most part um so i it's part of that you know i don't know they're trying to push you towards the part of their service they think will make them money but maybe dms will make them money because if maybe i don't know how would that work would you do like a promoted dm you could do why not i guess like a targeted dm like we will send a direct message to these people but it, i feel like that takes away the meaningfulness of dms right or I, I don't know. Or is it a way? Is it a way to monetize Twitter without 
being obnoxious on the public timelines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have video in your in your bio, if you have the word video, maybe you're going to get a DM from an advertiser. I would rather see no promoted DMs in the timelines mm -hmm. and all promotion goes through DM. Because think about it. So what? I have to go into my DMs every once in a while. I don't delete them. But I now, don't clean them Now out. my worry is now if that gets cluttered up with promoted and other DMs, then now I'm talking with you on TweetDeck for about the show, uh, Mike here about the show uh, uh, and everything. Now I have to go find you. You guys get pushed down from all these promoted DMs. I mean, that, yeah. it, that's a worst case scenario, but now there's more clutter in there for me to go through because it's not really a good organization. It's mm -hmm. the last one first, and that's about it. Yeah. So... Um, I, 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 what do you think, Mike, uh, as a as a Twitter avid Twitter user? I personally wouldn't do it, just because I already know how many spam followers I get on Twitter, and mm -hmm. I I would like I don't DM that often, but when I do, uh, you know, it's like nice to receive a DM. I don't I don't know if I would personally want anyone that I don't follow to DM me. Mm -hmm. It's like physical Just mail in your mailbox. <laughs> Everyone wants physical mail because you never get good physical mail. It's all junk. You get sad. Yeah. Like your heart sinks. You're like, ah, <laughs> it's not a credit card offer that will reject me anyways. <laughs> uh. <laughs> You'd think they would be better about that, mm -hmm. right? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, 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 this thing's going to continue to evolve, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But I, I like that it is opt-in. Like, if it was Facebook, be like, hey, congratulations, anybody can private message you. We're like, mm -hmm. no! See, Facebook removed the hidden from search, which I can imagine is going to drive AJ nuts. Yeah? Because he cre AJ created a Facebook account yeah. that was just meant so he could use Facebook auth for things like Spotify. Yeah. Now there is no way to remove yourself from Facebook search. Yep. So, so uh, AJ, well, if you're out there, let us know your speaking thoughts. Speaking of private, have you Although, seen... Although, to be fair, there are five accounts on facebook with his name oh really yes i'm gonna go friend them all i, I, I just decided like to Pokemon. do a quick facebook search and i see five of them hmm. <laughs> nice um well, did you see uh google plus also changed around their terms this week apparently to allow the uh from my understanding doing the uh suggestions like the your face will be used to oh, say yeah. oh you like this circle so maybe your friends will too um so the Facebookification of Google Plus continues, guys. I mean, isn't that what we said at the beginning? Though, it's like, well, it's going to be nice and clean because they start from scratch. They don't have all the ads yet, and here it is. <laughs> it, getting it's there. Google. If you don't think they're going to try and monetize it somehow, you haven't been paying attention to Google. Well, as it is, they, they <laughs> they've used it. I mean, this has been the discussion, you know, again with Munz's talk, and even on the Awesome Cast here last week at PodCamp Pittsburgh, how uh, Google Plus like. You know, realizing, you know, and I, with the business page I'm managing for, for one client, it's like, well, nobody really comes to the Google page, but everything we put on the Google page is everywhere on Google. Because if I look at the stats, I'm like, how do we have 200 hits on this Google page? Who the freak is looking at this? And it's people searching for it, coming up with, because your Google Plus page is now what used to be Google Businesses, Google Places, Google Maps, Google... Uh, you know, anything that at information can get plugged into for Google, now just go the Google Plus page is now the home for that. Because before you kind of had to manage that. Mm -hmm. like, like It was weird. In a bunch of different places. It brought it all together. So even if, you know, I'm not getting much engagement, people aren't chatting with me on Google Plus as my business or anything like that, it still connects all that stuff. Sometimes I do a search on something that we're working with, and I'll see the little icon with my face or the Wrestling Mayhem Show face on something we were talking about when I search for something for Raw. Now, granted, that's happening because the social search is on. It's all stuff I'm connected in. So, of course, my own stuff's going to come up. But, you know, that still bleeds out. If, you know, friends plus one that and, and you know, uh, Mike plus one's uh, something that I saw, I said about you know monday night raw and then a friend of his is searching for monday night raw stuff it comes up with the raw hangout because he plus one my post about the video we did that's how it expands out and that's what makes it so important so now of course they're getting ads into it well and i don't know you're you're doing the the rotation on twit tv or not Twitch. justin tv justin tv mm -hmm. um 
And you're playing that 24 by 7, right? Yeah, 24 7. It gets a, the frame rate drops a little bit <laughs> here and there, but it, it's running. The interesting thing is, is that ever since you started doing that, I am getting like three followers a day on Twitter. I on don't know Twitter. If, yeah, I don't know if it's some weird <laughs> correlation, <laughs> but as soon as you started doing that, like I am seeing on on an almost daily basis, now that is a I'm getting more and more followers. Like it, it's a it's a little. I, I was surprised. Like, within the last week, I've gotten, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That doesn't even make sense, because we were running well, the one from PodCap. You're not even on. Yeah, I, I don't so, know. So, I mean, well, well, the other thing is, though, it does capture the replays. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now there's these giant videos captured on the Justin TV page that just say replay, and it's, it goes for about 48 hours, <laughs> and it has, like, thousands of hits. I, and that's why I'm doing it, because, I mean, look at uh, – we have 100, you know, 100 people watching right now uh, to this live stream. But I'll go in at, like, 11 o'clock at night. Who knows what's playing on the stream? And we've thrown everything in there that, like, is – the newest of everything we do and as for some of the stuff we do like some of the dvds and the documentaries some of that content we've generated and people are in there watching somebody is in there watching and i don't think it's so much people jumping in and going away i mean i'm sure there's a lot of that but if you know eight in the morning and i tune in like there's 60 some people so what's going on here, you know? And, and I'm I'm kind of figuring out and trying to crack what is going on here and i'm really hoping that 24 7 theme stream is is you know, going to turn into more people that are into the show. What will be interesting is, is when the Xbox One comes out, mm-hmm. they're going to have Justin TV and built Twitch in. built in. There you go. So now, I mean, you're going to have another and, avenue. And I would like to, um, this thing, the, the computer I'm running it on can barely, obviously, um, uh, run the feed as it is. It's it's almost maxed out 100% all the time. I actually have been restarting Firecast once a day to get the frame rate back up, mm-hmm. um, I've determined. Uh, so if I get something that's a little more powerful down here, I want to push that out to Ustream and, I don't know, maybe Twitch TV. I, it sounds like it, you, it, you put anything on Twitch, right? It's, yeah, and it's, it's supposed to be gaming-based. Ba- Twitch but. was the major coverage of... Um, Mm -hmm. comic-con this year i think twitch and i'm not looked into much for twitch i just hear about it on all these stories uh but i think twitch is getting to that point where machinima Mm -hmm. originally it was like red versus blue stuff like it was all machinima machinima is uh uh producing content based in like game engines basically i think i think that's the definition of it really um but now it's like that's where i go get my trailers half the trailers i pulled up for a movie minute earlier this afternoon um were from machinima you know, they like become and, so. Uh, so it's videos. one of those. It's like MTV used to be music videos, but now it's all everything. Machinima used to be Machinima. Now it's everything entertainment. Twitch used to be video game videos. Now it's everything entertainment. Which I, I, although also makes sense because there's a lot of video games at New York Comic Con as mm-hmm. well. I mean, Comic Con used to be comics, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's everything. Yeah, now it, now it's MTV three <laughs> of, of entertainment, right? So, exactly. Oh, it's much better than MTV three. <laughs> Now you got Nike Fuel Bands in here, now. So I, I, but I also want, aside from that, I, I want to bring up the new Fitbit because it's got an interesting concept. Well, and just a real quick aside and kind of give an intro to this, the reason that I picked this is I was I was fortunate enough to talk to someone that went to, um, it's not Bloomberg, what's the other big Gartner? Gartner had their big IT symposium last week, and I knew someone that went, and she was talking to me about it today, and she said, you know, they're saying that. Eighty percent of the tech that we will own in the next, I think, or like five years. I'm probably going to get these stats off, but let's just pretend. Um, like eighty percent of the, the the tech you will own, will you will have to worry about going through your laundry. And it was wow. all about wearable computing, and 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 it just amazed me how much data they covered at the symposiums about wearable computing. Mm-hmm. So. You're talking. You're talking about the Fitbit, and then we can go through the other two. Mine, you can breeze by. I mean, they're pretty simplistic. It's just the concept of wearable computing's here, I, I, and I think people are going to start to really embrace it. And I think you're going to see more and more, whether it be Google Glass or it be a Pebble or it be a whatever. Microsoft's working on a watch. Um, who isn't? Yeah, who isn't? I think that's going to be the new thing. Fit, Fitbit added the time to their new Fitbit. Yeah, the the force. The, the new one is um, um, they had the time to I thought it takes notifications, too. I thought there was something about like, it takes notifications like from your phone. I don't know. I don't know how 
maybe but, on that small LED it would. I don't know. Yeah, like like text messages or something. Like we're just just. Pop I think up. it has a notification. I don't know if it actually displays them on the device. Okay. I thought but, it had but, a way. But yeah, I didn't find anything when I went back to look because it looks like it's just you can get more information like from your stats. What's in the right hand? Go up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Up a little bit, right there. What what's what's the what's the things on the right say? I can't read. Right, steps here. taken, distance traveled, active minutes, quality of sleep, time, stairs climb. Because that's the other thing. This thing also does elevation, and so a file just ended moving. Uh, hours slept, sleep wake alarm, call notifications. That's it. Call, call notifications. notifications. So well, okay, so that's not full on smart watch ish, but still, it's but it's getting it's, there. A, 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 a start, you know, and Missy's got the, the flex, mm-hmm. which is basically all of this, except it doesn't have the time. It just has, like, right. a couple of lights, and that's it. And I showed her this. is like, well, I'm kind of interested in that, you know. Um, so, but I think, like, whatever the next one is, if they get more, like, it actually gets messages and mm-hmm. stuff, I think that will be the one to jump onto. If that, because if you already have that, do I really want the Fitbit and my Google Watch and stuff? So you're going to start seeing convergence. I, I think you're going to see convergence, and I'm hoping you're going to see multi-platform because one of the mm-hmm. things, like at least the Pebble and the Fitbit seem to be cross-platform. Looking at like the um, Samsung watch, mm-hmm. it, to me it has a little. It's lacking a little on battery life, and it only connects to newer Android devices. Newer Samsung Android devices, which is super limited. Well, and I think that the reason there, I, I think you're going to be able to connect it to anything that's Android. What is it? Four threes, the current. Rev. Okay. But the, the only two devices that they kind of listed right now are the new Note and the new It's S4. like they have a patch to make it work right now. Right. And I think you're going to see it in, when KitKat comes out. Maybe you'll see it. Anything KitKat would, it would connect to. Mm-hmm. Um, Nike's taken the reverse of that. The fuel band is iOS only. Um, and they've had a long-standing. There's always been a Nike Plus setting in your settings on your mm-hmm. iOS. For and well, and I think what is Steve sat on their board or the, and they sat on Apple's yeah. board. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. But, I mean, is that any different than I have Facebook and Twitter built into my uh, Facebook? No, but I think the... And, but, you, but not Google+. Plus. But not Google+, Plus, yeah. I don't think it's different, but there's still an outlet to connect. Like, yeah, if you didn't have Twitter built directly into the phone settings, you can still download the Twitter app. Yeah. Whereas, like, even the Sony SmartWatch 2 that I put in there, that device is um, Android only as well. So I think they need to get to a point, and, and Apple's put in stuff in their SDK. Obviously, there's stuff on the Android side that you can definitely leverage. I think people need to think bigger. Uh, they, need, they need, whether it be Windows Phone, Android, iOS. Yeah, everything. everything. Uh, now, I want to see... BlackBerry, maybe not. I want to see, because um, I, I do have uh, an, a step tracker called Moves, and I, I pay a little attention to it because I realize how much I run around here, but I leave the phone sitting on my desk, mm-hmm. you know, so I know that isn't getting tracked. But, like, stuff like going out pod camp is like, wow, I had over 6,000 steps, you know, just from doing that, and I ran up in steps mm-hmm. a bunch of time. But and I, I don't even know if that app, because I actually downloaded this app before the, uh, iOS 7 and the new phone came out, um, but I'm wondering if that is uh, taking advantage of, of that as well. And then what do we see as applications for that M7 chip, which if you guys don't know, uh, the new iPhone 5S had has this M7 chip, which basically can track things like motion, like Fitbit style step trackers and stuff like that. Um, but the whole idea is it's going to do this without waking up the rest of your phone. So ideally, you could do an all-around monitor like a Fitbit with this phone in your pocket, um, but without draining much battery life. Well, that's, it's an int- that's an interesting theory or an interesting technology because... It kind of Sherlock's the Fitbit type devices because the, you've well, now made your yes. device does everything. That and Sherlock, Sherlock is, is if you've uh, uh, created a feature based on uh, somebody's software that they had out previously. Mm-hmm. So basically, you replace that by having it built in house. In. Basically, um, it'd be as if. Google built their own social network like Facebook. But, oh wait. Oh, they tried that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like a. D Sherlocking, but but you gotta think this only goes so far. How many times do I leave this here and I go run around doing stuff and I'm clean down now, here or something? You know, uh, or or, or uh. now here's an interesting stat. Okay, so so I would say that you are someone off norm or out of the norm in that area because the 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 statistic is ninety five percent of people have their phone 
at an arm's length a hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. So oh, it drives but, me crazy. It drives but, me crazy when I don't. Right. So I'm I'm thinking that the people that have the Fitbit or whatever that device type is are going to adapt to either putting it in their pocket or they already have it in their pocket. And and the Fitbit, when you have something like a Fitbit, it it doesn't leave. Mm -hmm. You sleep with it on, you shower with it on, so you don't forget about it. So you're not leaving it somewhere. And that's the whole idea. I think you have to charge it once every, like, six days. Okay. So you don't have much reason not to have it on you. It is, like, a built-in part of you at that point. And I think that's, especially when it's a tracker like that, and then it's left you, and then you get your little beat. They're like, hey, you meant your steps. And you get, like, it's almost a surprise, you know, and you just got rewarded by knowing that you... Just, you know, it goes back to that whole gamification of something like fitness, you know. Uh, my car with automatic keeps beeping at me now. And actually, although I think there is a glitch with it because it keeps beeping at me when I'm just driving along. And I'm not Ooh. over 70. I'm just driving along, so I'm not braking or accelerating. So uh, it's been happening this week. It's been really weird. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. Um, excellent. Uh, well, yeah. Um, with that, I think we do need to roll out of here so we can go talk more important things like video games in a few minutes. Um, but <laughs> GTA, probably. GTA. It's out. They're talking about GTA all night long here. Um, oh, here. What wearable tech would you recommend at this point from the chat room? Uh, and they're yelling at me for not paying attention. And we'll touch on that real quick before we head out of here. Um, I don't wait. I think that Fitbit is a really nice idea. As, I like the Fitbit. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, and I think, do you want a fitness device? Do you want a notification device? What platform are you running already? Yeah. Um, like, the Pebble Watch, well, okay, like, Google Glass makes more sense if you have an Android device right now. Or do, because and it'll do, you do care, more. And do you care about battery life? Because I'll go to mm-hmm. that. I would say, if I were to buy a wearable device and I was an Android user, I would go, even though... You have to charge it every day. I would probably go after the the Samsung device versus the Sony device because okay. the Samsung device seems way cooler. Yeah, um, but you would have to have that phone. You have to have the phone, and you and and you have to be willing to charge it every day. Which um, I don't think that because I, I mean you charge your phone every day, so I don't think that's you could take it off at night, put it on your nightstand with the charger. No, but now okay, right? so now on my nightstand I have my iPad, my iPhone. My Pebble. If you're on, this, my I that, think my that. I'm, I, got, like, I got my phone. I got my tablet here because this is always uh, tethered to my glass. My glass is always charging at night. I don't put that by my bed. I put it over on the, on the desk. Um, so it can watch you. So it can watch you. No, it's in another <laughs> room. It's in the office. Uh, but then I'm no, also charging no, it's my... the Xbox One that's going to watch Oh, it. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm also <laughs> charging... So daily use. Let's say, let's say I actually leave the house uh, every day doesn't happen um sorry buzz over here um so so ideally if i'm going out and i want to be connected in the way that i want to be connected i'm going to charge this thing the nexus 7 i'm going to charge my iphone i'm going to charge my google glass i'm going to charge the MiFi hotspot that i take with me so i ha- always have uh, uh wi-fi for the- i am a super uber well no but i feel the same way head so I- case with this right now but i but but so that's where I want. If, if it's going to be a wearable, um, I don't want to charge it every day. Yeah, I don't. And I think Chachi ran into this with glass. It, it doesn't. It doesn't last long enough for him. If you're if you're a heavy user of the tech, it, it needs yeah. to last. Yeah. Yep. At, at minimum two to three days, if not a week. And maybe well, your phone doesn't do that. But we're talking about wearable. But we're talking about wearable. Yeah. But but then you get something like a Fitbit that does one thing. Right. It, it does the fitness tracking. It does that a, thing. Have you seen? Well, the, now it does. Now have it you does seen the phone calls? Have you seen does. the flex outside of its case? It is this big. Mm-hmm. It is a little, 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 little computer. It doesn't take much to do what it does. But and and this idea of having and and this is the discussion of this personal cloud. You're going to have that thing that that checks on this stuff. You're going to have something else that, che- that that's keeping an eye on your heart. You have something else that's keeping an eye on your cholesterol. You know, I mean, I think you're just going to have, we're going to be peppered with these little computers that have a single task. I think it, it's breaking down. I, I don't do all the things I do on my phone with Google Glass. You won't do all the things on your Pebble Watch as 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 your iPhone mm-hmm. um, because it, it, it's more pared down now. Now we're getting to this point where we have these you know, almost unitasking 
devices. How many? I see. I, I'm. My goal has always been to consolidate devices. My, my yeah, goal has yeah. not been and to I think, expand. I think it's going to come, and it depends. But if it's more efficient to say, this device does this thing, this device does this thing, you only have to worry about one bit at a time versus one thing that's multitasking. Multitasking takes power. That's how it starts mm-hmm. breaking down. So I think, I think, and if anything, um, you know, and your Fitbit is more just, yes, it's a computer, but it's really just a sensor. And then all the really good computational stuff happens on the phone. Same but now the, you're going to have an app for that. So why do I even need Fitbit? Not to be rude, but I guess if, if I had to pick one. Because this won't come with me in the shower. This w- isn't attached to me while I'm sleeping to test all the rest of this stuff. But now you can put your phone, but you can put your phone on your bed and use an app to track your sleeping. I think that only works so well. I don't know. But I guess, I guess for me, it, the, going back to the question, what wearable tech watch? Oh, it's watch. Would you recommend at this point? I would go with the Pebble only because they seem to have a large app selection. They have a large it applies to following more people right now. Right now. Yeah. If, 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 if I had a new Samsung device, I would probably be like, go get the Samsung device because it looks awesome. Yeah, and I know and he's, got a, a he's got an LG Android, so yeah. he, he wouldn't even be able to. So, right. but um, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Um, I haven't heard good things about the Samsung actually. I've seen. I know a guy that has the Sony first gen, okay, which looks pretty cool, mm-hmm. and the second gen looks even cooler and gets better battery life and has more apps and all that kind of the, stuff. And, and whatever we say today will be different three months right. from now. It might be different after next Tuesday. It might be. What's coming I up? I don't think What's so. So, up? so coming up, coming up, uh, awesome things to look out for. Uh, upcoming and awesome, I think we're going to name this. Which I like this. I like the idea of this segment. We just like got this like halfway through the show. So, so it. we're going to try to bridge the gap from from awesome to awesome cast every from week to week. So, by the time we see you next week, um, three major events will have occurred. Microsoft's going to release Windows 8.1 on Thursday. That'll be an interesting scenario to see what how that plays out, especially with some compatibility issues I've been seeing. Um, Nokia releases devices on Friday. They're slated to release up to six devices: phones, tablets, phablets, possibly even. Is a, this a the future under Microsoft? We're going to no, see here. This is no, on the old Nokia brand. Oh, this is the this is the last uh, hurrah. Yeah, this is what we were working on before we went over to the dark side. And there, there, those that Friday announcement is I think four a.m. our time because it's actually taking place in somewhere in India Ooh, or like live coverage. Many will not do. Oh. Yeah. And then um, Apple has their event, obviously, on Tuesday, the 22nd. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m., whatever time zone there, Copernico, Apple time. Um, so, obviously, for that show, I'm sure, we'll be, we'll be covering some Apple yeah. stuff and hopefully even and going over is, these other releases. I think it's important to notice that uh, this event last year was when they refreshed everything. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, so, I think we're going to... We're going to get, you know, hopefully Mac Pro. We're going to get that Final Cut update. That's what I'm looking out for, honestly. Do we get something interesting with iPads? Um, I would like to see Retina Minis because I know I know the wife wants one. Um, well, well, she, wants, she wants a Mini, and I want her to have the better one. So how many of the features from the iPhone 5S are going to come over to the iPad? I think is going to be an interesting discussion. The- Do they get the thumbprint? Do they, you know, of course they'll probably get uh, the 64-bit processor and everything. Do they even bother with the M7? Was the M7 actually for something else as well? Because I don't see wearing my iPad that often. Mm-hmm. So What's interesting, because the, the, the slogan or whatever you want to call it for this one is, we still have a lot to cover. So are we going to see... iPad mini socks! <laughs> <laughs> That's what be. it is! It Everything's going to get a cover. That's what it is. Well, it's interesting, too, because I see more and more people with their a MacBook or a, a laptop type of device that's getting the silicone covers. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're going to come out with a whole line. They're going to reintroduce a, t- a slew of hardware, and you're going to see and a slew of covers. They're going to have MacBook uh, Airs and Pros in multiple colors now. I can, I can get, get a, a cover for my Apple TV. <laughs> I don't get a Apple silicon TV. cover. I don't need a silicon cover for my iPad Mini. I got leather. There you go. Leather with magnets. It's fantastic. How Wait, does that for? work? It's a mini. Oh, a mini. I thought yes. I, for some reason I thought it was his phone. I'm like, that's a huge phone. Yeah, that's my. Phone. <laughs> it's oh, fantastic. Sh- sh- show him again what you're using for your phone. So he's got that, and I think. Oh yeah. He's got an iPod so Touch. I have, I have this. I have an iPod Touch, 
and this is my phone. Nice. <laughs> That's and how he stays an ecosystem. Unless this dies a horrible, slow, agonizing death, I will never replace it. That's me. never going to die. You could run over that with a Mack truck, and it's not going to die. I know. It's last and forever. I have an extra battery for it. So I don't need any of those special fancy things whenever this dies i just pull the battery out take the one from my wallet put it in boom <laughs> awesome guys we gotta get out of here so we can go talk video games thanks again scarehouse for joining us thank you guys for uh, popping in and uh talking comic con you want to plug something oh i wanted to plug my uh my deviant art thing one of my favorite things out at um at the cons is the cosplay so i'm out there on uh deviant art underneath uh chilla photo um, if you click the link in the, the thingy thing, yeah, there you go. Um, so there's some of the cosplay pictures I've taken from some of the cons. Um, check that out. Um, I'll, I'm, I try to get out there at least once a month to update with a bunch of pictures from, from the cons. Um, so yeah, check me out on DeviantArt. There you go. And Matt and Mike, he joins us with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I did, and everyone should go listen to it because I'm on it, and that makes it awesome. There you go. And, of course, I'm over, like we talked about, Sorgatron.com, Sorgatron on Twitter, uh, and everything's at SorgatronMedia.com. You can join us here every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com if you're interested in uh, joining us in the chat room or just drop by anytime because that 24-7 stream is going. I've seen, I chopped on Justin TV, and there's people chatting, like, in the <laughs> middle of the night, like, that's they're, awesome, though. and they're responding to stuff. And like Awesome Cast is playing, but they're responding to something about wrestling. So I have this weird like transcription of confused people uh, <laughs> during the live feeds. But anyway, but if you want to go up, strike up conversation, see if anybody else is around, wants to talk with you. It's good. Th- it's good <laughs> cure for loneliness. So with that, thank you, uh, Mad Mike. Thank you, Chilla. Uh, you have been. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room that's been going all night. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome. We're